The attendance was 4,346. The gate was $322,742.50. Uh, <clears throat> fight of the night was uh, Benoit and, and Sampo. Sampo didn't make weight, so he doesn't get any money. We're going to give Benoit $50,000, so congratulations to him. Knockout of the night is Diaz. And, uh, oh, th did I say 50000 100000 He gets $100,000. Yeah, he gets both of their money. Pays to make weight. Knockout of the night is DS, and, and submission of the night is Holdsworth. So they, they won $50,000. What else do I got here? The Road to the Octagon premieres tomorrow on Fox for the Sacramento fight. Tell people to check their local listings for times. It airs following the NFL and most of the markets. Who's got the first question? Fighters will roll in here as they're done doing their whatever they're doing. We we'll start with Juliana, please. Obviously, uh, congratulations on your win. Uh, obviously, I know it's still probably real fresh for you here, but uh, what are the, what are the feelings right now? A lot of people always ask me if I get excited before my fights, and I say, no, I'm about to get in a fist fight. What's exciting about that? Um, but I like to get excited after I win, and I am definitely ecstatic, excited over the moon. So that's how I'm feeling. Obviously, you, you were overwhelming from the opening bell. Was that kind of the strategy, just to be as relentless as possible from the beginning and not engage in the, in the boxing at all? Absolutely. That's what I try to do every time. And if I could ask Jessica, please. Uh, obviously, thanks for, for coming. Uh, I know it was a, a difficult night for you. Um, talk about the feeling of, uh, you know, what went wrong tonight and also the fight being stopped with just one second left. Did you feel that that was just or that maybe you should have been allowed to see the second round? Uh, you know, Juliana is very strong. Sorry. And that's how she feels. <laughs> My manager. Um, you know, she's a, she's a tough fighter, and we knew she was going to come straight forward and and, uh, you know, overwhelm me. So, you know, she did exactly what she needed to do. And, yeah, I just needed one more second to try and get it back on my feet. But, you know, I give her credit. You know, she's a great fighter. So it is what it is. Can I ask you to weigh in on the stoppage if you thought? I mean, as a fighter with just one second left, do you feel like you should be given that? Or do you feel like if it's, if it's time, it's time? You know, uh, it's one second. But, you know, I understand that it is what it is. And the referee has to do what he has to do. So... You know, I should have been moving more. Plus, he's not watching the clock. Ref isn't watching yeah. the clock. There could have been two minutes left for all he knows. Sounds like praise for officiating that. No, it's just true. I mean, it, it, she, was, she was in the mount, and uh, she was dropping punches and elbows down on her, and the ref was watching. You're not watching the clock, you know? Maybe in a different situation, you know, the, the ref would be watching, but I, it, there was too much action going on. And just one for Davey, if I could. Davey, obviously, I uh, want to know how you feel about your performance. Obviously, uh, you know, disappointing loss for you, I'm sure. We saw the emotion. Um, but it, it seemed like you were putting on a good performance in, in, until the loss. Yeah, I mean, um, I feel as if I've still got a lot more, more, a lot more to give. Um, I don't think it was my best performance, but I'm not taking anything away from Chris. He, he did his job at the end of the day, and he was the better man on the night. So... Dana, a couple of questions about the women's division. Uh, obviously, this thing has a big head of steam behind it. Is it safe to say at this point that all of the women on the Ultimate Fighter this season will will see him fight at least one more time in the UFC? I don't know. I honestly don't know the answer to that. Okay. Uh, could we also be moving toward, are you starting to think about formal women's rankings down the line as well? What do you mean? Well, as far as like, you know, the, the website has the rankings of all the men and that sort of thing, you know, once we get Ronda and Misha fighting and that sort of thing and that settled, are we going to start thinking about women's rankings for the 135 pound division? Yeah. There isn't one now? There's, yeah. There you go. We're done. We okay. did it. Yeah. Very good. And uh, we'll move quick here. Also, in terms of where do you think the division is right now in terms of uh, your satisfaction with it, bringing more women in to fight, you know, could you, could you assign it a percentage in terms of where you think the division is, is filled out at? Well, obviously, the ultimate fighter helped. This is a good season. You know, I think we have some good talent. Um, and we will continue to do it just like we do the men. I mean, we'll continue to build talent. Now that there are women, you know, we did a, 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 a women's ultimate fighter and, you know, Ronda Rousey is the champion and all the things that go on along with it. I think you're going to see a lot more talented women getting involved in the sport and it will grow just like the men's division did. 
Thank you. Uh, hi, Dana. Uh, my first question is regarding Shayna Baszler and also Sarah Morass. What, when will they get an opportunity, if they do, to uh, perhaps fight in the UFC also? That I don't know. Um, Shayna is, uh, is recovering from an injury, so as soon as she's ready, I'm sure she'll be in, and then I don't know about Sarah. You have to ask Sean that one. And for Jessamine Duke, uh, there was a lot of, I guess, changes here in your striking. You looked really crisp there. Uh, uh, where did you train ahead of this fight, and what would you attribute the improvements to? Um, I've been training at Glendale Fight Club with Edmund Tavardian, who's Ronda's striking coach, too. And he, uh, he's been really working with me a lot the last couple months to tighten up my boxing and improve my footwork and just, you know, help, help me evolve as a fighter. So hopefully I, I showed that, and I'll just continue to do so. No other questions? That was quick. Uh, for Raquel, please. Obviously, uh, you know, you picked up a, a pretty convincing win this evening, but I think I read in your quotes afterwards that you said you, you weren't really satisfied with your performance. Um, can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Um, yeah, you know, I kind of I changed uh, camps this time around. I've been training under Mark Fiore. And, I mean, just overall, me as an athlete and everything, I know I have a lot more potential in me than what I set out to do. It was a lot different being back in front of the crowd and doing different things uh, for tonight's performance and whatnot. But, I mean, as far as it came to my nerves and everything, um, each fight is a growing experience for me. And I just wish I would have done a lot more, uh, letting my hands go and really showing what I have. But, I mean, each fight comes, and that's when I get to show a little more and do a lot more with everything. I was going to say, it was kind of similar to your, to your semifinal matchup a little bit, and they feel like maybe you just didn't let your hands go. Um, have you been able to, I mean, is there a link between the two? Is it something that you think mentally you just need to address or a, a technique thing? Uh, do you know? Um, you know, actually leading up to this, camp, um, this fight, uh, I kind of went through with some injuries and whatnot, um, coming out of the house and then still trying to perform through that. Couldn't really do a whole lot of sparring sessions in between times, and it was just... Um, it was something that was more mentally and everything, but now I have the time to recover and fully prepare myself for what the future holds and just to keep pushing forward. For Juliana, you've had only like an hour to think about this, but just kind of put into perspective what this means to you to, to be the champion and have the title. Uh, <clears throat> I know I said this a lot, but it means the world to me. It really does. Um, I do this for myself, I do it for my family, I do it for my fans, and uh, you know, I'm just uh, finally able to uh, put the, the stamp on the end of it and uh, seal the deal, and I'm, I give myself a pat on the back, I'm proud of myself, I did it. And real quick for Jasmine, was there any second thoughts to going to trade with Ronda, seeing as you know, she has what you want eventually, the, the, the championship? Um, no, not at all, um, you know, she's, she opened up her gym and her team and everything. I think you'd be crazy not to take that. She's, she, you know, she's, she's like family now, and everyone else is. So I didn't think anything like that at all. Uh, Nate, for you, real quick. Uh, you, in the middle of uh, all the punches that you were landing, you kind of stopped and put your hands up. Were you, were that, were you shocked that the ref hadn't stopped it, or that he was still standing? Yeah, I think in in uh, boxing they start hopping in when they're taking a lot of punches, or maybe their corner would have thrown it down, but uh, I wasn't going to stop. I was just trying to, at the same time, it was just kind of curious. I was trying to set up a good good one to land to finish it off if uh, if they weren't going to stop it. Nate, a uh, question to you over to your left. That was uh, a great performance tonight against a really good fighter. Did you Do you rank that as one of your best? And it seems like maybe it might have been your best performance considering the level of the opponent you had. I just, I just, uh, yeah, it was the top, top ten guys, so it was just got the job done quick, and that was the, that was the objective. Uh, well, the to get the job done, so I, I don't know. I guess I'd go home and watch and see what happened. You know, you've always been such an accurate puncher, but maybe you know you haven't been thrown with that full power. But tonight, when you were putting on him, I mean, you were really laying it to him. Did you, you know, kind of step up uh, your power tonight as opposed to just trying to land, but you know, try to add a little bit of zip behind those shots? Well, I feel like I hit hard all the time. Sometimes I just keep going, and like instead of being like uh, 
full blown power shot, I feel like maybe a lot a lot more accurate punches will do, but if I slow it down and, and uh and try to hit you hard, I'm gonna hit you hard. It's not like I don't hit hard, but uh my brother in the back was going over some stuff with me. He like let's if you're gonna uh if you're gonna uh, get them paused up, or if you're gonna if you're gonna land anything, let's make sure it's solid and, and hard hard shots, and not just uh, overwhelming. So I'm like, all right, it's good to you know sometimes if you get a little reminder, uh, it it helps. So. Dana, Dana, one of the impressive things about Nate is, you know, how much confidence he has. And it's like he came into the fight on a two-fight losing streak, yet he said in the ring afterwards, I think um, Gilbert Melendez and I are the best lightweights in the world. Do you think that you need to have that kind of confidence in order to succeed at the level that he's doing? Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, I, I, the guys who are real fighters believe that they can always win and always believe they're the best and don't ever doubt themselves. Hi, question for Chris here. So now uh, that you have that trophy there, you're the ultimate fighter for the men's bantamweight division. Is it really soaking in yet? And how did you feel about your performance tonight? Yeah, it's definitely uh, soaking in. It's all a, you know, been a crazy journey and just a, a, a great life experience. And it's just beginning. Uh, you know, Burt Watson said the other, uh, yesterday at the fighters meeting, it's harder to stay here than it is to get here. So, uh, you know, I'm just gonna work my hardest to to do my best and, you know, keep becoming a more complete fighter and just keep winning fights. And for Nate, you were talking a lot about Josh Thompson there in the post fight with, with you and Gilbert. Uh, I know that he's probably on your list of who you want next, but he has to fight Benson first. So would you be interested in the winner of that or, you know, getting another shot at Benson? I don't, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe I'll sit on the, on the sideline for a good long, long minute till somebody gets injured and fight for a title like everybody else is doing. I think my problem and I lose some fights sometimes because I, I do have a lot of losses on my record, and, and other people have a lot of criticism and shit to talk about me losing fights. But if you take a look at my record compared to other people's record, for every two fights, I fought six, seven times. So if they're fighting the same amount of, and more consistent like I am, they're going to have more losses than me. So uh, maybe I'll sit around for a while and uh, wait for an injury to pop up. Thanks. Uh, Nate just kind of answered my question, so uh, I guess Dana, for you, you know, the the women's division did kind of arrive with Ronda Rousey in, in February with, with the first female championship, but tonight it sort of arrived in a different way. You had three women's fights on the main card, and I'm just wondering, that was a brand new experience for everybody. How did you feel about it? What did you think of the quality of the fights? You know, now with with like as you're building a division, what did you think of the night as a whole? Yeah, it was good. I mean, all the girls were very technical. Um, you know, women's mixed martial arts has, has blown up so fast in such a short amount of time. I mean, that fight that I always talk about that I hated um, was probably, you know, 11 years ago. And if you look at the card tonight and the talent and, and, and you know, what's happening with, with the sport with women, it's pretty amazing. So, yeah, I'm happy. A follow up for Chris, please. Um, obviously, you know, you're part of a, a, a camp that knows about championship level fights and that sort of thing. I know you're a very goal oriented person as well. It kind of sets out. How do you see your career progressing for this? I mean, this is an entry into the UFC. You know, do you want to fast track and get yourself to the top? Do you see that for yourself or do you see, you know, kind of a slow progression up the rankings? You know, I'm just going to keep taking it a, a fight at a time and just becoming a better fighter. Uh, just keep training hard. Uh, we got four guys on the card two weeks from now in Sacramento. Uh, Joseph Benavides is going to walk away with the flyweight strap. And, you know, we got Uriah Faber and Danny Castillo and Chad Mendez are all going to, you know, throw down that night too. So I'm going to get back home, help them train for it, and, uh, you know, see those guys, you know, get their hand raised in two weeks. And I just wanted to ask Juliana kind of the same question. Obviously, you're in a division that's relatively new, so there's not a lot of established talent and ranking, so to speak. You can make an immediate impact. So. How do you see your progression in the ranks? You know, coming in as the ultimate fighter winner, do you feel like you should be an instant contender and you know, be working yourself to a title right away, or do you feel like there's still a slow climb for you? <clears throat> I'll fight uh, whoever, the Fertitta brothers and Dana White and Sean Shelby and everybody, wh whoever they put in front of me. 
A uh, couple questions for Nate, please. Nate, congratulations. Um, I mean, we, we've seen you have some great fights and some great finishes, but it's been a while since we saw you knock out anyone. I mean, was this uh, kind of a focus of this, your strategy to, to outstrike him? My, my, my mission was to win, and it's always to win. And uh, that's that, that was the plan, and I'm glad that it went that way. I was kind of thought they should stop, stop the fight. I'm glad that they stopped it uh, when they did, because it's a rough sport, and I don't think people should be taking shots. You know, so it's not like, I want to kill that guy and like talk some crazy shit like the rest of these people, but uh, I do want to win, and that that was my uh, that was my plan. But I'm glad they stopped it when they did. How how quickly did you realize that that this was over and you had him hurt that badly? I had him with the straight in there somewhere, and I I could tell that it was going going somewhere good for me. So. Uh, all week you talked about how you thought you and Gilbert were the top two guys. You brought him in the octagon. Uh, is no, it, that were the top two guys. Is, is, no. it safe, is it safe to say we'll see you at, at 155 until one of you two has the title? I don't know, man. Right, right now we're dealing with right now, so we'll see what happens. Uh, and just lastly, was this uh, worth missing your high school reunion for? It would have been cool to go there, but I was broke, so I didn't. I didn't show up. <laughs> Is that it? Thank you very much.